What's up hobby friends and welcome to my video tutorial on how to paint Marvel Crisis Protocol's Spider-Woman from Atomic Mass Games. I've got up on the screen all the colors and materials I've used for this figure, so if you want to give that a pause, note those down and then we can dive right on into the video tutorial. Hey. So the build for Spider-Woman herself, um, very briefly, goes together very smoothly. I think Atomic Mass has gotten really, really good at making these figures go together um, almost without seams. A lot of it is hidden by natural, I guess, line delineations or separations in the suit. Um, for example, her legs where the torso meets, there's a bit of a, a seam there from the actual suit itself and they hide the join with that seam. So for the most part, this model goes together very easily. No gaps to really speak of, except for this one on her left thigh and buttocks. It's very, very thin. So what I've done is I've just used some um, gloss varnish, just copiously applied, smooth it out. That should fix it up once I prime it. It may require a little bit of sanding or another layer of gloss varnish, but um, that's pretty straightforward. Otherwise, we're just building the model as is. Fairly simple, it's gonna be a red suit. So I think for the most part, we'll do some airbrush prep and then the model itself doesn't really require sub-assemblies to separate from the base. The pose also does help because she is um, elevated in such a way that you can really get to all the different elements on the base. Typically the issue I have with a lot of more dynamic Marvel models is they tend to get in the way of base elements. We don't really have that case here. The only other note to prep is I'm still not a fan of these. It does give the model a more dynamic pose, but this doesn't make sense with the fact that they're bases. Atomic Mass only really has a very limited number of base designs and it's like, where is this debris coming from? Is she near a fence? Is she near a building? It just doesn't make sense to me. I wish that they would give either blank bases or just a wider variety um, to help bridge that narrative gap to make it feel like it's a piece of rubble that's been thrown off. I've used a bit of ground texture paste. This is AK's Dark Earth Diorama paste, I think it's called. And all I've done is I've just blended it into the base make it feel a little bit more natural. You can really use sand, flock, and sort of texturing will do. We're gonna prime over it and paint it as well. So I'll give the model a prime with Vallejo Surface Primer Black. I'll paint the base off camera for the most part, largely because I've covered it with some of my other Marvel miniatures that go in my collection. So for the Khaki Stone and the Terracotta Stone, I'll have links in the video description below if you wanna check those out. So I'm gonna start with a bit of airbrushing to do the red suit. I want to start with a base coat of AK's Burnt Red, and I'm just going to apply a nice even base coat over the entire model. You can see that I've used some blue tack and painter's tape to mask off the base. From there, I'm going to use AK's Blood Red and apply a Zenithal Prime over the model. And you can see that I'm just spraying from the top of the model, catching those bright raised areas and keeping that Burnt Red in the shadows. From there, I'm gonna go in by hand with some pure blood red, and I'm gonna start blocking in the highlights. I find that an airbrush finish tends to not be as bright or as intense as hand painting it. So I like to, once I've done airbrushing up to put my midpoint, start by painting in with that midpoint. From there, my next highlight color is Scarlet Red, and this will start to bring the suit into an orangey red tone. The Scarlet Red isn't too bad. Um, it does give this suit a much more vibrant color feel. You just want to be careful not to um, overdo it too much, especially in the shabby areas. It is fairly noticeably orange. You want to make sure that it does fade very well into that blood red. So here, I'm just looking to target the basic muscle forms. Because this is a skin tight suit, I want to really accentuate the various muscle forms, especially in the legs and the abdomen. I'm getting real, um, Elastigirl vibes with this model. And there, my next highlight on the red is with Amaranth Red. And much like with the Scarlet Red, very orange tone, so you want to make sure that you are being at this stage of the highlighting fairly selective. If you use too much of it, the suit becomes more orange and less red, so you want to make sure that Blood Red covers a large portion of the suit and that your Amaranth Red um, blends into that Scarlet Red, which blends into that Blood Red. You need to have that orange into the strong red mid-tone transition. If you go too heavy with the oranges, it again makes the suit feel less red, more orangey, and you lose that nice red saturation. 
I'm focusing less on smooth blends at this stage, although because the paints are fairly dilute, I'm able to feather and glaze them out a little bit. From there, I'm going to go in with Scale 75's Inktense Red, and I'm going to start to glaze and nuance the underside and mid-tone of the suit. Where it does start to lay on top of the orange, it knocks back the color and brings it back into that red tone. So if you do run into the issue where you went a little too overboard with your highlights and the suit ends up looking more orange, you can use this color to bring back that um, intense red of the suit and bring it back into a nice vibrant tone. There, I'm gonna mix a 50-50 mix of burnt red and reddish black, and I'm gonna start glazing into the shadow tones. So the color mix for this in the airbrush is fairly diluted, almost a watercolor mix. I use a lot of flow improver to help it really flow smoothly. And then I have my airbrush set to about 10 or 15 PSI. Really what we're doing is we're laying down glazes. You can do this by hand, you get that accuracy, but I find with the airbrush, it goes on a little more consistently and you don't need that brush control. Although you do give up a bit of accuracy. I'm gonna go in with some Juchi Violet and target those really deep shadows. And I find the purple in the deepest shadows adds a lot more depth and nuance to that red color. Paint the yellow, I'm gonna start with a base coat of World War I French Brown. You'll wanna do a couple of coats of this because we're gonna be building up to a pure yellow tone. You don't want any of that black base coat showing through. From there, I'm going to start highlighting with number six, Earth Yellow. At this stage, I want to really start to block in the musculature, particularly on the abdomen. With the hands and the fingers, you want to make sure that you're leaving the recesses in that deep shadow. Once I've got my Earth Yellow base coated, I'll start to mix in some volcanic yellow and continue to highlight up. Because of the way that the model is angled, you're going to find that the brightest highlights for the yellow in particular are on the tops of the abs, tops of the hands, whereas on the underside of the legs, it does stay more predominantly in the shadow and you don't have to highlight up as much through your yellows. And you see here that I'm continuing to work all the way up into pure volcanic yellow. And as you work your way up into the brighter colors, you're highlighting less and less, so it does get faster and faster. Once you get into the pure yellow, you're going to want to make sure that your paint is nice and diluted. There is a hint of white in this, so if you do um, too heavy of a coat, it ends up being too chalky and a little bit too textural. So you want to make sure that you're diluting your paint enough to lay down some thin colors and build up your layers smoothly. And then finally from yellow, I'm going to mix in just a hint of pale yellow to pick up my extreme highlights. This does knock back the saturation of the color a little bit, but that's okay. Use this to really punch the highlights because once we're done laying down this color, I'm going to go back in with some gaming yellow and really just glaze over and resaturate everything. The yellow ink does knock back your highlights quite a bit. So with the pale yellow, you can actually go a little bit overboard knowing that the game ink will then knock it back and smooth everything out. To paint the black trimming on the suit, I'm going to start with a base coat of black. You want to be careful. Um, especially around the red and yellow, not to overpaint. So keep your paint nice and dilute and just do a couple of layers. And I do skip a few steps here. Um, you're going to see that I've actually painted a lot more of the model before going back and painting the black suit. Uh, you can do it in whatever sequence you like. I'm going for a, um, a blue-green sort of color to the black, which is going to be on the trimming, the bindings, as well as her hair. So I'm going to lay down my first base coat of dark sea blue. And then for my highlights, start mixing in progressive amounts of green sky. On the trimming and on the bindings, I think my brightest highlight ends up being about a 50-50 or a 70-30 of that green sky, dark sea blue mix. But when I start to apply this highlighting to the hair especially, I go almost into pure green sky for those really bright highlight points. And then finally, I'll go back in with some Juicy Violet in the airbrush and I'm going to shade down, in particular the hair. This will help just to smooth out those transitions and apply a bit more of that deeper shadow tone without necessarily taking that value in the shadow too dark. Paint the white webbing on the underside of our arms. I'm gonna start with a base coat of dark sea gray. And the goal here is to work up to pure white. 
I think the grays I end up using are fairly neutral, a little bit more on the warm side, and which is fine the majority of the model because it is reds and yellows. Having a bit of a, a warmer white tone helps keep everything in a nice warm color palette. You could go with a cooler um, blue or a blue gray tone. It wouldn't look out of place, particularly because it's on such a select part of the model. So really all we're doing is here, we're working our way progressively through various progressive shades of brighter and brighter whites, working our way up to pure white. I think pale sand ends up being the majority of the highlight. The trick to painting really good convincing white is to use as little white as possible. Save that for your pure um, spot highlights or your edge highlights. And then you want to have an off-white or a, like a just a step down as the majority of your highlights. And you really want to have a lot of nuance in your mid and shadow tones. White looks best when you actually have a lot more color in those mid and shadow tones and very little pure white. Paint the skin, I'm gonna start with a base coat of base flesh. And be careful, especially around the cowling, not to overpaint this into the painted red area. From there, I'm gonna start mixing in progressive amounts of AK's beige red. I'll start with probably a 50-50 mix of the colors, largely because that'll cover most of the skin, except for the quote-unquote black lining. And then from there, I'll just start mixing in progressive amounts until I hit pure beige red. It's fairly easy on this face because there's not a lot showing. There's not a lot of, I guess, muscle structure. I have to worry about highlighting. So really you're just picking up like the nose, the nostrils, upper and lower lip, the chin, and then the uh, bowels and cheeks. From pure beige red, I'll mix in and work my way up to, I would say like a 70-30 pastel yellow beige red. When you're highlighting, especially female skin, you wanna make sure that you're not over exaggerating um, certain features like the jowls and the sides of the cheek, you can age a figure or make it feel a little more masculine. Just be careful to keep your highlights nice and soft. And then from there, I'm finishing off with some glazes of violet red. Watercolor consistency, targeting the um, cowling and the sides of the cheeks. To paint the fence, I'm going to be using sort of a non metal, -metal uh, blue or blue-gray. So I'll start with a base coat of dark sea blue. Apply a nice even base coat, and then from there, I'm going to start to highlight all the way up through gray blue. Because this is a minor part of the model, I'm not really focusing on smooth blends. I'm jumping fairly brightly through my highlights, focusing on edges, and getting nice textural scratches to show through. You can see that as I'm working up through the, um, the gray blue and the spectrum blue. Again, focusing on the edges, sharp lines for the highlights of the cylinders, and we're giving the illusion that it's reflective non metal model, and I'm adding a lot of chips, scratches, and dings to give it that warm, beaten look. My final highlight is with greenish white. This is just a step under white. It has a hint of a green tone in the bottle, but when you actually lay it down on the model, you don't really notice the green unless you apply it over a large area. So I like using this in lieu of a white. And then finally, I'm gonna finish off the model with some weathering powders. I'm using a 50-50 mix of burnt umber and dark yellow ochre from Vallejo. When you're applying the weathering powders, you wanna make sure that you're using a dry brush and you're applying a little bit at a time. With weathering powders, it's a lot easier to add more. It's very difficult to take off without using a damp brush. And when you do, you take off pretty much all of it. So it's always best to apply a little bit, evaluate, and then add some more. Once you're happy with the overall result, we're gonna to want to fix the powders to the base to protect it from gameplay, because this is a tabletop game. So for this, I'll be using some mineral spirits. I've got this loaded into a spritzer bottle. And what I'm gonna do is basically spritz and saturate the entire base and just let it sit. It'll take about 45 minutes to an hour to evaporate, but once it does, it'll more or less be set, although you still don't want to be using your fingers to rub the weathering powders because it still will, will come off. Yeah, so once that's done, we'll paint the base from black. I'll apply a matte varnish. So for that, I'm using Mr. Hobby's Super Clear, and that will protect the model from handling because again, this is a tabletop game. And that completes our Spider-Woman. So I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure you give it a like 
and subscribe for more awesome weekly content. If you want to check out my other social media platforms, I'll have links in the video description below. As always, until next time, happy hobbying.